Monday, November 11th. Please uh, join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Action on our agenda, which you have before you. Uh, Mr. Dahman, do you know of any changes? No changes to the agenda. Thank you. I make a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Second it. Motion from Tom, seconded by Mike, to approve the agenda as presented. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You have your agenda. Uh, minutes are next. Action on the minutes will be necessary. I make a motion to accept the minutes from uh, October 28th as presented. Second. Okay, motion from Tom, seconded by Rick to uh, accept the minutes as you have them presented to you there. Uh, any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Vouchers are next. I make a motion to approve vouchers 10, totaling $981,169.55, and building fund 49, totaling $85,495.21 as presented. Second. Okay, motion from Mike, seconded by Karen, to approve the vouchers. Uh, are there any questions on the vouchers? All in favor of approving the voucher signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The vouchers are approved. On we go. Public participation. Uh, I grabbed the sheets from the end of the back of the room there that have no one signed up. Uh, if anyone wishes to speak, quickly get your hand in the air. Otherwise, we will roll past that. Okay, uh, student council report. Uh, so the last few weeks of student council, we've been organizing our blood drive, which will be Wednesday. So we're getting as many kids as we can to come down to the gym too and donate blood and make a difference beyond Milton. And we've been just deciding who's doing what job and who can help out. Very good. Okay. Jeff, we have the person on the phone. Oh, can you mute that? Well, just turn the volume off. That, that might be beyond my technical capabilities. Well, no, the person on the other side needs to mute. Oh, Diamond, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you mute so you don't have all the background noise coming through to us? Ah, thank you. Is she still thank there? You. Are you still there? She can't talk. She can't. Okay, now she's still there. She's she just there. She just can't let us know. So it's much quieter. Thank you for that helpful thing. Uh, building and department announcements. You folks want to make your way to the podium and share that stuff with us? Um, under Relationship, Climate, and Culture, we had our first annual um, Empathy Obstacle Course, which was led by our student services administrators and then our student council students. Um, and what that was is to provide an opportunity for our fourth grade students to walk in the shoes of someone with physical disabilities, communication, learning, and attention differences, as well as build, build awareness of diverse um, life circumstances, so it was a hands-on experience for all of our fourth grade students. Um, also under Relationship, Climate, and Culture, our parent-teacher conferences were um, well attended, so we were able to connect with lots of families. And then the last is under um, Teaching and Learning. We have uh, Intervention Before School, which is for math, um, reading, and also for social-emotional learning, also partnering with our high school students for our morning tutoring. Right, representing the four K through third grade world um, in the area of community. We have all done or will do some Veterans Day um, activities to honor the veterans in our community. Um, Wednesday is also World Kindness Day. Um, so we will be doing some activities <coughs> on that, although we um, promote kindness every day at all of our elementary buildings and not just on Wednesday. Um, 
in the facilities pillar, um, there has been some visible action at east as far as construction, as well as at west. We are starting to see some visible um, work as well as the construction site has been fenced off. So we are both excited to see the progress that is starting at those two areas of school. Um, in the area of teaching and learning, today we had some professional development in which teachers could choose from many sessions to discover some new and innovative ways to use technology to enhance the learning of all of our students. At the high school, uh, in the in the facilities too, we've had uh, a large number of uh, user groups that have been meeting with uh, the building design team. Uh, so we have been working uh, both in the STEM area, the music area, the uh, phi and athletic area. So those have been very, very um, positive meetings. It's exciting, starting to see uh, what that is going to look like. Uh, and opportunities, just an announcement, uh, the high school musical, um, a Lively Blonde is going to be coming this is this weekend. It's Friday and Saturday nights at seven, and then at two o'clock matinee on Sunday. Uh, also, uh, next week Friday, uh, well, there's lots of activities. We have actually all the uh, winter sports are starting to uh, ramp up. Uh, but uh, a shout out to a group that has been forming. It's our uh, computer lab, our computer science kids. They're actually going to be going next Friday. We have two teams of four students each. Uh, are going to be going to MSOE. They're going to be in a coding competition. Uh, Blake Shaver is taking those students. Uh, they went and watched last year. They've been working on those uh, types of questions and they're really excited about uh, the competition this next week. That'll be next week Friday at MSW. All right, at the middle school, uh, ditto to many of the things that were said by other principals in terms of parent-teacher conferences at the middle school a couple weeks ago. Um, awesome PD day uh, today as well. So. Thank you to the board for supporting that with our calendar. Um, I'm sure our calendar conversations for the next school year will be coming up. Um, but again, just a huge thank you for supporting those professional development days. Um, school report cards, I guess this applies to all schools. Uh, the public release of those DPI school accountability public uh, school report cards will come up tomorrow. So um, the middle school today spent some time going over that with our staff during the PD day. Um, relationships, climate, and culture. Um, on Friday, we have our second rec night of the school year at the middle school, November 15th from 6.30 to 9 o'clock. Um, so huge thank you to our parent group for continuing to support those. Just an update on the special ed self-assessment. As you know, it's a three-year process and we finished looking at IEPs uh, two weeks ago. We had 550 items that we had to evaluate and we came out really pretty solid. Our next step is now to retrain staff on those types of errors and we'll have DEI come in and, uh, and then review our documents and check to see how we're doing. Um, a shout out on the PD day today. It was a lot of fun for a lot of people. There was a lot of opportunities for people to select the type of um, professional development they wanted to have happen. We had two that were very focused on special education. One was um, how to collect data on IEP goals so that we actually can see a trend line to see how kids are progressing on meeting their needs. And the other one was on board maker, which um, is, a, is a device that helps our kids who have a difficult time communicating um, better able to share their thoughts and their feelings on what it is that they're learning. All right, so a lot of different things happening. I'm seeing some amazing things in all the schools. Uh, I just wanted to talk with you about today. Uh, so while our students were home shoveling the snow, hopefully for their parents, uh, and all of these fine teachers here, they were here learning, and we had an amazing day. Uh, this is the second annual Milton Innovation Summit. Uh, last year, we, we started this process with bringing in a national speaker and then doing uh, some pretty amazing sessions throughout the day. Uh, we, uh, Kind of follow that same format here this year. We have Michael Cohen come and do our keynote, and then he actually stayed in the afternoon and did two sessions with, with our staff members as well. Uh, just some amazing work. Uh, one of the one of his biggest um, one of our biggest takeaways, one of it from his message was that <coughs> the culture of innovation starts with the culture of empathy. So everything that he talked about in terms of innovation and technology came from a frame of how do we differentiate and meet the needs of our kids. Uh, and I think that resonated with a lot of our staff members that it just isn't about the new and flashy technology, uh, that isn't just about uh, a, a new device, it's how we're using the devices. 
how we engage with kids in it, how we make it rigorous, how we make it relevant, but also how we, how we, meet, how we meet in their needs. Uh, so it was some pretty powerful stuff today. I heard lots of amazing conversations. Uh, the buildings then had some time at the end of the day to, to meet together and talk about how they're going to take this momentum for the day back back into their home school. And we're, we're pretty excited to see what those next steps are. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ryan, and, and all department and building heads for that uh, update. Uh, next up on our agenda is a new uh, agenda <coughs> item of sorts. Uh, it's called School Spotlight. Uh, I think we might have uh, talked a little bit about it at a previous meeting or two, but it's really a, an emphasis or a focus that I brought to Rich oh, a month or two ago and uh, just wanted to take some time, maybe once a month, for each of the buildings that we've got in the district to uh, both reflect and gain a little insight into uh, what kinds of things are going on at that building, what staff works there, what, uh, what good things we're able to do for kids. So in no particular order, we're going to work through our, our, our district, if you will, and uh, we're going to start tonight with Consolidated. And uh, the spotlight is on Consolidated. Welcome, Sarah. <coughs> Thank you. So I'd like to start by thanking our Consolidated staff who were able to join us. So if you could just wave from your seats there. Um, they are a wonderful group of staff members who helped contribute to the slides, both with providing pictures and information. So this was a collaborative effort, but they've elected me the spokesperson this evening. So I will um, share it with pride. Consolidated is the smallest of our four elementary schools. And as you can see there, we have um, changed a little in how we've looked over the years. The photo that you see is the original Consolidated School. So land was sold to um, create the Joint Consolidated Rural School District in 1920. <coughs> Actually, the land was sold in 22, and the school opened in the 2023-24 school year. So we're getting close to 100 years of having a school on that property, which is pretty exciting, I think, for the school district of Milton. In 1925, it was changed to the Janesville Consolidated School. It was a one-room schoolhouse, and uh, it housed grades K-8 at that time. It was hush for many, many years, as you can see, and then it was switched to a K-5 building, and there was an addition added the addition that was added at that time is existing today, and that was in 1956. So that was renamed Consolidated at the time. And then in 1993, which was the year Northside opened, <coughs> we were switched to a K-3 school and named Consolidated Elementary School. So a little bit of history there. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful, rich history down to um, the names of some of those um, original staff members and all kinds of interesting information but for the sake of tonight even though I'm excited about it and could share a lot we decided to keep the history pretty brief for you but that original the only other thing I'll add is that that foundation of the building you see in that picture is currently our <coughs> which also serves of course as our auditorium and cafeteria so um, the foundation of that building is, is still in use which is cool the physical building of Consolidated, now you can see it's a little different there. And um, we have one main level that houses an LMC, otherwise known as a library. One classroom that's a shared space for our art and music classes. An office space, some tutorial space, and then the four classrooms, one for each grade, <coughs> kindergarten through third grade. On the lower level, as I mentioned previously, that's the gym. There's also a break room. And then there is a basement that houses the boiler. Okay. Him scrolling through for me here. So that's a picture of one of our classrooms in action. That's our first grade classroom. And as I said, we have one section of each grade, kindergarten through third. Right now we have 80 students at our school, and the class sizes are listed there presently. So uh, we serve uh, the students that live in that area as well as some open enrollment students who open enroll in, into our school district. We've been blessed to celebrate high achievement uh, that doesn't go without hard work by our staff. Our staff is very committed to give specific attention to every student in the building 
to move them from where they are forward and in the recent years we've had very high success in our school report card and um, not only with student achievement but with our attendance rate and those things are both areas of focus at the school and I think another point under achievement would be the collaborative approach. So um, we have a very small staff. There's a core staff of seven professionals that are there every day. So that's Mrs. Lopez who runs our office. And if you ask her kindergartners, she's the principal of the school. Um, and we have two wonderful paraprofessionals who are here with us this evening who serve so many roles in that building. Um, from supervising students before school, after school, the lunches and the recesses, uh, helping run the library, but also running small group interventions for students in need. So they really do it all. And then our four wonderful classroom teachers who go above and beyond every day to team together to make the needs, meet the needs of our students. So this is a nice quote here that talks about a staff member who I uh, had a daughter who attended the school and now works at the school and um, was able to see that it wasn't just what she thought when she was in the building for those visits when her daughter attended, but it really is a special place where people collaborate every day to make students, to meet students' needs. I was paraphrasing. <laughs> Opportunities, so we know that in Milton we talk a lot about achievement, opportunities, and community. And at Consolidated, we have some really unique opportunities for our students. Some of that is because of our location. We have a special connection to the ag community out at Consolidated that happens through animal encounters, as well as um, the proximity to our cornfields and students. That picture of the harvesting happened within the last couple of weeks, and so, um, it's, a, it's a special thing that not our, our other schools just don't have those opportunities. So it's, it's a neat connection out there. Um, we also have a prairie that was put in place um, by the parent group and some parent volunteers. We have some parent alumni mm -hmm. whose children have all since moved on and are sixth grade and older at this time, but who still come and do a prairie burn and then help the students collect seed and plant seeds in the spring and so collect seeds in the fall, plant them in the spring. So it's a special thing for our school to have its own prairie, and they're very proud of that. We have a young author party, so and all of our elementary school students work very, very hard at writing. At Consolidated, the students do an extra writing piece that isn't required as part of our spoken sequence in the curriculum, and then there's a young author party. And so it's a published piece that's actually, um, you know, a piece that they can have an actual book that they get to take with them and it's a big celebration when those pieces are completed so it's something unique to consolidate it we also have a lot of guest readers guest speakers we connect with our Janesville fire department who comes out and does activities with our students and um, so those are some of the things that are great opportunities for our students In the community, um, we have a wonderful parent group called PI. It stands for Partners in Education. They meet formally once a month, but they work much harder than just once a month. They're together and collaborating to do great things for our school year round. Uh, they sponsor some socials. The picture on the top is actually a school outing to a Beloit Snappers game, which is connected to a literacy program to encourage reading. And then the school, including staff, students, families, go to a ball game together. Um, we have uh, book fairs, and the, the, the parent group there supports the field trips. And so their big mission is making sure that all students have lots of access, equal access to field trips. So they cover the field trip expenses at that school. That's how they use their fundraising funds. Uh, we have also uh, important to note that we still stay connected to district activities. So even though we are the farthest away from the city of Milton, we are still connected. Our students come and see the middle school play and the, we connect with our high school band and show choir when we come into the auditorium in the spring. We come in and bus the students in for the homecoming parade and enjoy that. 
and um, look for lots of opportunities, not just to go into the school district, um, the other buildings, but to invite others to come out. So we have students who come out from the jazz band and do performances and things like that as well. So it's important to note that while we're really unique and kind of isolated out there in the country, we are still very much a part of the school district. And community. So connectedness is a big um, theme that you hear when we talked about our school scorecards. All of our schools have goals related to building connections within our staff and within our between our staff and our students. We do a connectedness survey from grades second grade on up to ensure that our students are feeling like there's someone they can go to. And our our theme and our staff can kind of turn and show the, the back or I can. The theme of our um, school, we have the biggest little school in Milton. So um, while we're very small, not only in the uh, square footage of our building and the size of the population we serve, there's a lot of really big and exciting things happening at our school. Um, we do some cross-age activities. We have blended grade field trips. Um, so there's some things that are really unique that are community building within our school. couple of extra uh, quotes here um, you know, talking about the unique experience that it is from the small and welcoming community and just that atmosphere of caring staff um, knowing that without a doubt they're in the best of hands so that was a parent quote um, so a couple of nice shout outs to the staff there so that's a little bit about where we are presently and where we're headed we are always looking to move forward and continue our um, quest for excellence at Consolidated. Some of the goals, we have goals in all of the areas of our strategic plan in the district, but I wanted to highlight a couple here. So we have a goal for academic growth in the main core areas of reading, math, and writing. As I mentioned, we have a goal in connectedness, as well as improving our school attendance rate and maintaining a high level of student attendance. Uh, under family engagement, this year our staff is going to be working on planning a family math night. That's something that we haven't done and, and we'd like to learn from some of the other elementary schools that have done that and get, get that going. And we're also working on building family connections around the world of um, social and emotional learning competencies. So that's something you've heard during our building report outs and um, that's an area of focus in the district. So we are looking at that as a school and how can we help under, help our parents and guardians understand the social emotional competencies. Much of that work that we're doing at school can also be um, complemented with supporting parents in, in having some tools at home in that world as well. And that's at the end. Okay. And a second grader, I love this quote, at this school, we're a family. Like, you're my brother, you're my sister, and we include everyone. So I thought that was a, a very sweet um, sentiment, and I think it's very true. Every student knows the name of every other student in the school, and it really doesn't take them long, which is saying something. Because if you think when you're five, 80 people, it's a lot of people still for a five-year-old. But it is amazing to me if I pull a kindergartner aside and say, hey, can you remind me who's that? Who's wearing that, you know, giant pink bow in her hair? And they always know who it is. They, they just have such an amazing community, every student connecting, every staff member connecting with every student. I think that's one of the things that I, I find the most special about Consolidated. Some of the improvements happening at our school um, as you know, and this is no new news to the folks in this room, we are excited about expanding our space at Consolidated. So we'll be building the, the gray area in the, in the, well, what do we have here? The green area is the new office, that's new restrooms. The gray area, I think it's gray or blue, is the new office space. So that will have a secured entry. So that's consistent with um, the other schools that have already made that improvement. And then we'll be adding some ADA accessibility improvements with remodeled restrooms and a lift that will allow access to our lower level. Because as you know right now, in order to get to our cafeteria, which is also our gymnasium, you have to navigate stairs from either end of the building. And so this lift will 
make us much more accessible, not only for our own students and staff, but for our visitors who come for special programs and events. So we're very excited about those improvements that are scheduled to begin next summer. And I just want to close with, with this. I, I think when I became the principal at Consolidated, I was so impressed the first time I was at a school assembly. They have a really unique way of starting out every gathering that they have as a school. The staff prompts by saying, it's a great day. And the students respond by saying, to be a consolidated Red Hawk. And they respond in unison, saying, be kind, be safe, be ready. And then they get their hand ready and say, and be here. So that uh, you know is a testament to the work that has been done in the area of attendance, obviously. But it is such a cool thing to see a whole gym erupt. Um, we've done it at the beginning of celebrations we've had. Some of you as school board members have been there and seen that in action in the last couple of years. And it's just kind of a neat tradition that they have. And those four um, themes, be kind, be safe, be ready, and be here, are the PBIS themes. Every school has their own unique um, expectations, sets of expectations, and those are the four that we focus on at Consolidated. And that's our whole student body on the basketball court. So um, that was a fun day. I was able to stand on top of the slide to take that picture, and they were very happy to share their smiles. I'd be happy to entertain any questions you have. I know this was more just to help everyone present and looking, watching out there to learn a little bit more about our school. But if you have any questions, I'd do my best to answer them. Yeah. Sarah, I got a question. Um, that, what's the history of Consolidated? It used to be Janesville Consolidated about 20, 25 years ago when we changed it to Consolidated. Was it like Harmony and Johnstown? Is this a country school or was it part of Janesville School District? At one time? I think it was its, its own school district. So it was a joint school district. <laughs> and at the time it was Harmony and Janesville. Town of Janesville, Town of Harmony was the first. So if you go all the way back to the beginning, Kim, you can see. So back when the land was sold, as I did, the homework that I did said that it was its own school district. At that time, it was a two-room school. I don't know the difference between a two-room school and a one-room school, although that's how it was covered in the press, was a two-room school, and uh, it was its own school district. Then when it was Janesville Consolidated School, that was 1925, that was part of the Janesville School District, but then the Janesville part was dropped, and it, at some point, and I didn't see exactly when that happened, when it switched from Janesville to Milton, but I know in 1956 was when they added the addition, and that was all done by the Milton School Board. So at that point at least, and maybe even before then, it was part of the Milton School District. So that's how that was. But you're right, it was, um, and for a while, called Janesville Consolidated School. Yeah, I think in the early early 50s is when they uh, redrew the boundaries for the school districts. So that's probably why it, it went from Janesville Consolidated yeah. It, it was fascinating. That I'd like to give a shout out to Melanie Smithson. She's one of our paraprofessionals. She had done a lot of homework to, to dig up old newspaper articles and things a while back to try and get a grant for us to be able to do a, micro, a celebration, a school celebration for one of our, our decade points, our milestones. And maybe we'll go for that again when we hit past uh, 100 years coming up here in a couple of years. Um, but it was fascinating to look at all those old, old articles and, and see the faces of some, some pretty special people that have, have led that building and, and worked in that building over the years. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Very for good. giving uh, us an opportunity to share about our school. And thanks again to the staff who was able to come. Indeed, yes. I was going to add... Uh, we're proud of all of our schools, obviously, and we want to take uh, a little spotlight each month and um, get Sarah hats off for being the guinea pig of sorts. Uh, she has laid out a bit of a template that uh, I think we'll probably Thank follow. You, a bit. But uh, one of the goals I had when I came up with this was while every family and student in the district shared the experience of intermediate, middle, and high school, the elementaries are a little unique in that you may or may not have much exposure to one that you didn't attend. 
So the connectedness thing is a real goal, and uh, Sarah did a wonderful job of, of uh, establishing that so that those of, uh, those of you that didn't go to Consolidated, mm -hmm. that does not include me because I am a proud <laughs> alumnus of that building, which, by the way, in the late 60s was Janesville Consolidated School, but certainly part of the Milton District. Uh, it was K to six with the, with the six classrooms, which seven grade level six classrooms, you did the quick math, we shared a classroom between like third and fourth grade, depending on student numbers and some of that. So at any rate, um, we've taken plenty of time on that and thanks to all the work that you guys did and hats off to, to everybody out there at Consolidated. Okay, we will move on to number two on our agenda is referendum. Mm -hmm. I will invite Mike. And Mike is looks like solo tonight, so we'll be getting an update from Mike. Hello. I've got a short report for you, and I guess that I'm here to talk about how the biggest middle school is going to get a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and that's got to be Nick Summer's teacher. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you heard, uh, we, we are underway with construction of elementary schools. Uh, at East, uh, largely it's been preparation work, uh, ready to uh, start to dig the, for the foundations and the footing. Uh, so uh, we'll be able to watch that here uh, very soon. Um, it has triggered uh, a new set of uh, meetings for us. We have started our job uh, coordination meetings or job progress meetings. Uh, that are conducted every other Thursday in the Jake Cone trailer. So we're now meeting uh, every Thursday with uh, one, one week being uh, continuing our design sessions and then we alternately meet at the instruction coordination meeting. Um, middle school design is uh, really wrapping up now. And uh, when we come to you at your next board meeting, uh, we'll be presenting the design development drawings, and that will come with uh, a cost estimate from J.P. Cohen. Uh, that seems uh, seems like it's on track uh, quite well, um, and we'll have that to present to you um, in your package, and uh, uh, also uh, in person. Um, at the high school, Jeremy uh, uh, talked a little bit about it. Uh, we continue uh, with the design development process there. Really have, uh, I think, made some good strides in the student services area. That uh, looks quite a bit different than it did uh, with earlier iterations of the design. It's a very, uh, I think, inviting space opened up to the, the uh, corridor at the uh, office area. I think will uh, really dramatically change the look and hopefully the interactive aspect of uh, with the students and the, and the staff in that area. So good, good advancements there. Uh, the STEM wing uh, has been modified slightly to uh, see if we have the ability to incorporate an elevator uh, in there. We looked at uh, the distances uh, to get for someone that would be in a wheelchair or have uh, some kind of, kind of mobility impairment. Uh, and it's quite a significant distance from uh, the existing elevator all the way to the other end. So we're looking at, is there a possibility to incorporate a, an elevator? Is it, it, does it work within the budget? So we're gonna be able to show you some options for that uh, as we come forward. And then finally, uh, Punga Racich has, uh, uh, they, they build their drawings, so all the architects these days build their drawings in uh, in three dimensions now. So they're able to take that uh, three-dimensional drawing platform and convert it into a, a model that they can actually kind of fly us through. And we saw that at our last design meeting, and it's uh, it's really quite impactful. I think it's uh, there are spaces within the high school that are a little bit difficult to understand when you look at them just in plan view. And it was helpful to see it uh, as a fly through of the model. And I think that you'll be seeing that uh, in, in future meetings. That model also helps tremendously with the construction process. Our architects will hand that 3D model on to the uh, mechanical trades, and they'll be able to 
actually lay out ductwork and plumbing in the future and, future and look for, so they call it clash detection. So we don't get out into the field and find out that the uh, uh, stormwater drain line intersects with a, a, a large supply air duct that's discovered <coughs> in the model process and resolved before we get out of the field. So that, that piece has been a great advancement in the, in the construction world maybe. That's really all I have for you. Any, any questions at this point? No? I guess I have one, Mike. Uh, you said you put up construction fence. Is that a snow fence or is that just regular construction? <laughs> uh, <laughs> weren't expecting the snow this early, so no. no <laughs> Very good. No other questions. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Okay, thank you. Okay, on another agenda then, Transportation and Safety Committee report, Ms. Karen. Well, and hopefully I will be able to get through this without dying and going through. Um, uh, the Transportation Committee met um, on October 30th, and we really had three agenda items. One was the Crisis Communication Management Plan, or the CCMP, um, and basically what that is, is how the district communicates information to each other as far as between the buildings with parents, um, how they handle accidents, um, catastrophic emergencies like bomb threats, active shooter training, fires, tornadoes, those sorts of things that are um, tornado drills or fire drills, um, student um, issues, student, uh, suicide prevention, prevention, things like that. Um, so that uh, plan uh, was reviewed and it was updated. Um, there's, it's something that we've had in place for a number of years um, that um, just yearly needs to be reviewed and updated. So that is what has happened. Um, Edward, do you wanna go through each one of these? Uh, this is an action item. Let's take a moment. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there is an action item on this. Um, so I guess I would like to just make a motion that we adopt the plan as it was presented in our committee, and as we all received in um, the binders that we got. A second. Thank you. Okay. Motion from Karen, seconded by Mike, uh, to update our and adopt our revised uh, CCMP as you see it in front of you. Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, all in favor of adopting it signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That motion clearly passes. Thank you. Now um, we jump down. The second thing we talked about was, um, well, it was kind of a, a two part thing. It was the 2019-2020 Go Bright Way um, transportation cost and amendment contract, as well as the update on the Here Comes the Bus app. Um, East, starting November 4th, East was piloting the Here Comes the Bus app um, for that week. Starting tomorrow, that goes out district-wide. Um, there's been communication home, um, sent physically home in paper form. There's been communication on Skyward um, about that portion of the app and how you get set up with that. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions related to that. Um, as far as um, the contract goes, um, we did have a, a small increase of 3% to the 2019-2020 school year, um, but we also increased our routes by one. Um, in 2018-2019, which is this <coughs> past school year, we had 20 routes and in the 19, 1920s, um, school year we have 21 routes um, and a lot of that is due to actually number three which is our unusually hazardous transportation plan um, but we do need I believe that is also an action item yes. um, so we would need um, a motion to um, accept the new cost and amendment that we received in our packets 
make that motion? I guess I will make that motion that we accept, as the chair, <laughs> as the chair I will make that motion that we accept the 2019-2020 um, Go Right Way um, transportation cost and amendment. I'll second. Thank you. Okay, motion from Karen, seconded by Tom to approve the 2019-2020 Go Right Way contract transportation cost and contract addendum as presented. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Um, just to clarify, um, Karen, this uh, addendum also includes um, your comes about that? Um, the, let me get to it. I believe the addendum included There's it's not included in the addendum. That, will, that has been approved previously by the board. Okay. That's, that's correct. The, the addendum refers to confidential student information that's right. because Rightway has access to Skyward. Okay. That's what the addendum covers. Thank you, Kim. I don't have a question. Just a comment. It just, I, I know as the years go by, you know, it's only like three percent, but it's like a million and a half dollars. Three percent is quite a bit. And then we add a bus on, and we add extra routes, and it, it keeps getting higher, but it, it's just the cost of transportation kids, you know. And I don't think there's one of us that want to start doing it ourselves, you know, our school district doing it. <laughs> That's one thing you want to farm out. So I, I've been happy with right way. I mean, Jeepers for, for years, I think they've done a very good job. And, uh, so. Well, the other part of that is, you know, we can, we can certainly, you know, look at transporting them to school, but how safe do we want to make that transportation? Um, and I think that's where that cost increases, with particularly with the increase in that route with the um, the next topic, which is the unusually hazardous transportation plan. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we get our students to our schools as safely as we can. And unfortunately, with that, does come an increased cost because of extra bus buses needed for extra routes or revamped roads. So. So moving on to that third item then. Oh, we have a motion on the floor. Sorry. Any other questions? Okay, motion on the floor is to approve the right way contract as presented, including the addendum. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That motion clearly passes. Now you may move on. Okay. So the third item on this was the UHT or the unusually hazardous transportation um, plan. If you remember, a couple months back, we had um, at, at one of our last transportation meetings, we had um, kind of charged uh, Jerry with taking a look at our current um, unusually hazardous uh, areas in the community and taking a look at those and seeing if those needed to be expanded or if they could remain the same. Um, and he had done that and had contacted the Sheriff's Department is part of um, reviewing these situations and as a result there were some um, areas that were significantly increased um, because of unusually hazardous areas. Um, the one area that does come to mind is, um, and I know I think we talked about it the last time, was the new Red Hawks farm area. Um, because that does not have sidewalk in yet, um, that becomes um, an unusually hazardous area for children to walk um, given where they're walking from and to. Um, so as a result of this, this now has two stops um, in that neighborhood um, to safely transport our kids. Um, so this from here, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, goes to DPI mm -hmm. for approval? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so this is just the next step in the process to get it to DPI. Karen, is there any additional funding available uh, because of the expanded zone? We get two cents per pupil, am I correct with that? I don't know the amount. It's, we do get some, it's not, it, there's not a ton of compensation for it, but we do get some. Okay, well this is also an action item, I need a motion that's been so suggested there. I make a motion to approve the 2019-2020 school district, school district of Milton unusually hazardous transportation plan as presented. 
I'll second. Thank you. Motion from Karen, seconded by Mike, to approve the UHT as presented. Uh, are there any other questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion clearly passes. I think that exhausts your report. Yeah. Uh, okay, and we will give you a break because I'm going to transfer over to the HR committee and Mr. Westrick is on stage. Okay. The HR committee met on November 7th. We had two items on the agenda. The first one was an update on the health insurance, uh, district health insurance. Um, there were uh, initially some questions that had uh, reached the, the HR and the administrative offices. Uh, I'll basically roll out uh, what we're going, uh, what we already have in place, and Chris, if you want to uh, add additional detail, detail to it, I'd appreciate that. Um, coming up on November 21st and December 5th, uh, Dean will meet one-on-one -on -one, uh, with individuals that are going to be transferring from Mercy to Dean. Um, and uh, it's initially it's a 15 to 20 minute one-on-one uh, -on -one to uh, answer any questions, any concerns that the transferring uh, employee may have. Uh, it sounds like that's going quite well. Um, it seems to be, uh, from what I'm hearing, it seems to be uh, a good idea. I'm hearing from the, from the staff. Chris, are you, can you talk about that a little bit? As with any kind of changes, there's concerns about um, benefits. And with this health insurance change, there's um, a few people have reached out with concerns about that. And um, the information that we talked about in the HR committee on November 21st and December 5th, we will be rolling that out to staff. Uh, Rich and I will be working on communication for that tomorrow. Um, so we'll be letting the district staff know that if they would like to come in and talk with, Mer uh, with the dean reps about their Mercy Health Insurance, they're able to do so. And like you said, 15, 20 minute conversations for high level education and uh, talking about uh, maybe some of those concerns that uh, uh, Dean should be aware of and providing a Dean point of contact going into the rest of this year. Okay, do you have any questions on that process? <coughs> the second item on the agenda was discussion on compensation process and use of employee uh, recommendation forms. All of you should have uh, received in your packet a copy of the recommendation form that's currently being used. Uh, after discussions, um, there are going to be some uh, changes to it, uh, potentially an additional box up on the top, uh, as, as well as some uh, other uh, verbiage um, that we received as a, a potential improvement from our legal counsel um, on uh, addressing uh, vacation payouts and the use of additional pay. Um, just anything else to add? No, you, uh, you, pretty, you summed it up really well, Tom. Um, with that employee recommendation form, I'd just like to you know, let the board know that it is a communication tool that we use to make sure that everybody that is involved with a new hire, a change, or um, any kind of vocation change, if you will, so they move buildings. We make sure an um, employee recommendation form is completed just so that we have all our ducks in the row and people are paid underneath the correct account codes, the correct dollar amounts, things like that. So that's the purpose. Um, that started 10 years ago. Uh, Mary Allen and I had uh, worked on that communication piece to make sure that we as the district office were um, not missing things. And the, the policies that kind of address uh, some of those are uh, 3120 and 4120, um, one for the uh, administration and support staff. Um, uh, going along with that, we will make some changes on the student handbook to, to update uh, any changes that there may be. Um, staff handbook, I'm sorry, not student handbook, staff handbook. And then also uh, waiting uh, for Carrie to, be, to come on board uh, as a, uh, in the finance committee our finance office to to make sure that we include her input 
on any recommendations as well. Uh, any other questions, comments? Yeah, um, I was looking over this. Um, I see there is no place for a signature for for uh, board approval, and I guess I'm questioning why that is. For board approval, board mm -hmm. approval signature. Are you talking about the new board recommendation form? Yes. Um, because that's a form that we use for internal communication for the district office from the hiring supervisor, and then from that process, once there's a change, it comes to the. Um, docs that you would approve on any given night for the staff report. Okay. Um, so there's one one box in here that says new position. Correct. Okay. Um, and in board policies, a new position can't be created without board approval first. So that's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. Okay. So so that's one of my one of my concerns. The other thing is, is um, and this is probably isn't necessarily, I mean, this is a form, right? I mean, it doesn't have anything, it doesn't go to the procedure or any protocols. And so, like, for instance, Tom just mentioned, well, if they get vacation payout, well, as far as I know, uh, there isn't any board policy that states that we are, as board, are in favor of vacation payout, um, unless it's in the contract. And so um, I guess I'm still kind of looking for that that piece, and it was one of the recommendations from the investigations uh, back in spring, is um, where are the protocols that basically give you guidance as to when to uh, uh, implement this communication document and when not to, and where's the procedure that actually calls out how to fill this out? And I'm wondering, if is that something that's going to be a work in progress so far or it is. okay it is this is a very first step with identifying what the uh, board's legal counsel has represented has mentioned to us to start working on yeah i would i would suspect that um and i would um an expectation i have at least is that there would be a written uh protocols and written procedures uh, and, and it to be actually linked to this Go ahead, Mitch. All right. I, just to clarify some things on that, uh, Tom had mentioned earlier, but maybe it wasn't clear that uh, with our new director of business services starting her first day today, we wanted to involve her in the in that planning for that process. So we'll be putting together some administrative guidelines on what that process will look like now that Kira is on board. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, Mr. President? Yes. Very good. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Chris. Okay, now we will jump down to number five is curriculum committee report. Back to you, Ms. Karen. Great. Um, the curriculum committee met um, tonight, right before the regular scheduled board meeting, um, and we had a pretty extensive list of um, curriculum proposals for the 19. 2019-2020 school year, um, 13 of which were new courses that were um, are being recommended that we approve, and the remainder of them um, were courses that were uh, revised based on um, the new trimester system that's coming out. So I don't know, Jeremy, if you have anything else? No, you, you said that, oh, no, we are not. Uh, you said that correct, Karen. The, uh, the list of new courses, there's two types of uh, courses that are in there. One that are brand new courses, and another one that are restructured. Uh, this, we have 13 new courses for the 2020-21 school year, which is higher than normal. We actually are taking a lot of advice from the schools that we had visited and uh, having more single trimester courses that gives us more options uh, for scheduling and giving students more options and more flexibility for me to actually do the schedule. Uh, the other courses that are in there are existing classes that are rescheduled um, from semester into trimester courses and in several cases particularly in the tech ed and the egg science area taking year-long courses 
and dividing them up into three um, single trimester courses that may not necessarily be have to be sequential. It gives students a lot more flexibility and a lot more avail availability to take those courses. And again, it gives us flexibility in scheduling. So as we uh, start that, uh, a lot of the advice that we received was to give ourselves that flexibility. And we believe that these changes are gonna give us, give students that ability, that availability, and us the flexibility. Uh, of note in there too, uh, the, uh, all the courses do fit under our current staffing uh, and instructional uh, budget so that these are budget neutral questions. The one exception being the expansion of the Project Lead the Way courses uh, because of the training and the startup cost, but uh, we are able to utilize some of the Act 59 uh, grant money that Amy Kenyon has written for, uh, and we feel that we're gonna be, uh, that'll be sufficient uh, to get to those two new courses, the Project Lead the Way courses added. I got a question. I, I know before they always said that they have new courses, they always had to have so many students in those classes. Yep. So if, say, you have new classes, but some of the old ones are down where they don't have as yep. many people, because you aren't going to have 13 more classes. You're right. Gonna have right. So it'll, and, it'll and equal up. You know. And this year is unique because we are having the, the, train, the change over to the trimester, too. So I, it's some it's my predictability that I've always had. We don't necessarily have that. Um, but uh, any time uh, we always evaluate the, number, the enrollment of students uh, drives to which courses run and which do not. Uh, there are courses that we currently have on the books that will not run. And that's been the case every single year. Uh, if a course we don't run a course for a couple of years, then we don't. We then we need to clean it off. I have had the hard conversation saying it's time to take this class off. You don't see keyboarding anymore in the in the course handbook, or you don't see there's a word processing course we had years ago. Uh, there's an, any number of courses that we uh, retire, uh, and and this is part of that process of just keeping the curriculum fresh. But yes, you're right. Uh, we uh, there's we do not have a policy in a set number of students to be able to run a course, um, but we will not be expanding staffing in order to do this. Thank you. Any other questions? I would entertain a motion to approve the Moulton High School new course proposals as presented. So moved. Motion, motion from Tom, seconded by Karen. <laughs> to approve the courses as you see. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That clearly passes. Thank you, Mr. Billhorn. All right, new business. Uh, action on 2019 2020 open enrollment alternative applications. Ms. Kim? I have uh, three transfers out in your package. Um, one is a brand new student. I, I don't believe there's only one of these that is currently attending Milton. Make a motion to accept the open enrollment alternative application. I'll second. Thank you. Motion from Tom, seconded by Mike, to approve the open enrollment alternative applications. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I'll assume that was an affirmative. With the delay in technology, that motion passes. Okay. Miscellaneous uh, action on staffing report. I'll make a motion to approve the staff reports as presented. Second. Thank you. Motion from Rick, seconded by Tom, to approve the staffing report that you have in front of you. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Motion passes. Gifts and donations. That memo is there that attached yes. in front of you? So I'd like to make a motion to approve $4,358.94 with gratitude. Second. Thank you. Uh, a motion from Mike, seconded by Karen, to approve with the gratitude of the board and the entire district the donations that you see in front of you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, meeting dates. 
we uh, need a policy committee meeting sometime uh, between now and our next regular meeting. And the next regular meeting is on November 25th at 6.30. And we have a HR committee meeting with a question mark after that. I don't know if we need another HR committee meeting or not. Um, okay, do we need that uh, before the next meeting, Chris? Okay, as far as the policy goes, um, I'll talk with, I'll talk with uh, Rick after the meeting to see if you have a more of a, a standard schedule so we can look at uh, scheduling a, a policy meeting um, at five o'clock. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. On Wednesdays. Wednesdays is good then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I am going to be gone next Wednesday. Um, Brian, five o'clock still works for you. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Is it is it too early for policy for this Wednesday? Okay. Well, would that that work for Brian and Rick? Um, I think we, we might want to just uh, talk because I'm wondering if there's, if there's a possibility that we can kind of extend expand the agenda a little bit on, on some of the recommendations that we uh, from the investigation if we can incorporate some of that. So I think they're pretty easy changes. But I mean, that would probably be a discussion that we should probably have. So you're saying you don't think we could have that ready by Wednesday? Well, I could probably, yeah. I don't know if you, everybody else would agree. Um, the, the administration brings recommendations from the, for the, for the policy, so. Well, I think the board, the policy board can bring recommendations as well. For sure, for sure. I mean, that's kind of our job. So can you can you have what potential changes you want by Wednesday? Yes. Okay, five o'clock on Wednesday, we'll have an HR or a policy meeting at district office. Okay, HR. Um, Diamond, are you going to be back around yet this week? I am out of the office the majority of the day tomorrow. I'll be back in the late afternoon, and then I am on a retreat for our executive team team on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I wouldn't be available until next week, unless we did a late meeting tomorrow. Okay. Um, I'll be I'll be available Monday and Tuesday of next week. I leave in the afternoon to go to our retreat. Um, Mike, with this Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday morning. Is that too soon, Chris? Okay. As opposed to 24 hours prior. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wednesday at uh, what time, Diamond, will work best for you? Like, like eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. Anytime. We move the policy to Thursday at five. Okay, how about uh, eight o'clock on Wednesday morning? Okay. Eight o'clock Wednesday morning, HR at district office. So you'll, you'll have the agenda item so I can post it by eight o'clock? Yeah. Okay. okay, and uh, Ricky wanted change it to Thursday? The policy works better on Thursday for what we need Brian. Okay. Uh, at 5 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Um, policy will be changed on Thursday at 5. Okay. All right. Go down meeting dates. And yes, we are. Okay, that exhausts our agenda, with the exception of a motion to go to executive session. Um, so I will entertain a motion to go into executive session, section 1985, sub 1, sub C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, and performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Uh, this would be relative to the superintendent contract. And there is a possibility of reconvening and open. Not so an absolute, but a possibility. So 
Lane is second, please. Yeah. Thank you. Motion from Tom, seconded by Rick. For executive session, uh, starting off with Rick. Roll call. Yes. Brian? Yes. Mike? Yes. Karen? Yes. Joe is yes. yes. Tom? And Diamond? Yes. To go to executive. That is all in favor. Everyone is unanimous, so that passes. Thank you for coming. We are in executive session. I'm serious.